Hi, I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Linda Quinlan. <laughs> I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's Tuesday, November 3rd. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge that we're taping in Montpelier, which is unceded indigenous land. And I'd like to call your attention to the pearls that we're all wearing in honor of Election Day and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's a tribute to her. Now let's have some headlines, starting with Keith. So I want to start by acknowledging that this is National Native American Heritage Month. Mm. So we may need to spend some time looking for pieces of history to share with people. And our trivia question, for which you will need <coughs> paper and pen, as of 2019, all 50 states have had openly elected LGBTQ officials. 46 were to state legislatures. So Vermont, we've had a series of first elected to the House, to the Senate. Who? Who might they have been? And bonus points if you can say the year. Ann and I got them all. So, <laughs> so I, I think that's in the tradition of the outgoing federal administration. Alternative, fa alternative facts. Mm -hmm. So my sort of around the block. First thing I want to start is there's a growing story coming out of Rutland County about a firearms mm -hmm. training facility. Yes. And exactly who they are, what they might be doing, and the impact it's having on the community and why we're going to be tracking it is this is the same area where there have been problems directed at you know the chair of the chapter of the NAACP mm -hmm. in Rutland same area I'm so glad you're covering that because you know people are talking about it on front porch forum and I think it's <clears throat> kind of an alarming development well it's one of those things that over the years in conversations that I've had with other activists as we have been working very hard to make Vermont an accepting and inclusive place for us, we're doing the same for our opposition. And it may be time for us to really have an honest conversation <coughs> about <clears throat> when free speech is hate speech and when it really steps over the line and it's an extreme risk situation. Public safety says they, this group is on their radar screen. They are following it. But thus far, there's nothing that's happened that's outside of Vermont statutes. Also looking at Vermont, I had mentioned on the last show that we are looking at doing the town hall forums again, only they would be a virtual town hall forum taking COVID precautions into consideration. There has been a dramatic shift so that the dates that they may occur have been moved back to allow for a conversation of, do we really want <coughs> to do these based upon a <coughs> geographic region, or do we want to do it based upon what it is that you would like to talk about, such as a town hall forum that is specifically devoted to health care, mm. a town hall forum that is specifically devoted to the, the needs of seniors, a town hall forum to how do we invite, you know, indigenous people of color, the Latinx community to actively engage in work with us rather than just giving it rhetoric. So you don't have a date yet? There are no dates. Okay. So that's, that's the sort of big piece of it. Uh, moving really quickly, Canada, their House of Commons has passed on their second vote the ban on conversion therapy. The thing to keep in mind, however, is that this would be forced conversion therapy of minors and or adults, that the res religious exemption is still in there. So if I'm going to my faith leader and saying I want help, they could still employ those same um, counseling techniques. Rhode Island is now allowing a gender neutral option on their driver's license. <laughs> <clears throat> Maine now allows a gender-neutral option on their birth 
certificates. Yeah. So there are 12 other states and the District of Columbia is they do it. Susan Collins will be good. By the end of the day, <laughs> Gideon, that's the name to remember. Yes. So Belfast, Maine, which is on the Maine coast, nice little <clears throat> rural community, Sid Sanders openly transgender high school valedictorian. Hmm. First in the state. Very good. On a previous show, Linda had talked about household data and percentages of same-sex households in each state. Massachusetts ranked third at 1.2%, beat out by Delaware and the District of Columbia, tied with Oregon. Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine were at 1%. This is from the census data, the American Community Survey portion. And if you remember, and you did fill out the census, didn't you? <laughs> Where it said relationship to head of household, was this a same-sex household? <clears throat> That's where those numbers are coming from. And then per the Victory Fund, there are 574 openly LGBT plus candidates running various levels. 21 of those are openly transgender candidates, two of which are in Vermont. The overall count is a 33% increase from 2018. And when we go through the segments, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of those races to watch and how the landscape might change in Vermont's legislature. So what you got? I got news. Other than lovely pearls. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, and in honor, well, this is such a disgrace that Amy Cody, Coney Barrett is replacing our beloved uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but in my headlines, the first Supreme Court with newly confirmed <clears throat> Amy Coney Barrett will hear its first major test on religious liberty, and I will have more on that. Melania Trump films dishonest video claiming her husband is pro-gay. Really? Wyoming out politicians make their voices heard and seek a hate crimes law. <coughs> Parliament House, an iconic Orlando, Florida gay bar, is <clears throat> shutting its doors. Uh, restaurant in Texas is accused of firing a man over his HIV status. Chicago... Blood sport politics. The lesbian mayor is in a new documentary. Kids of same sex parents perform better academically, a survey finds. This <coughs> dead marijuana candidate <clears throat> is paid by the GOP to defeat a lesbian politician. Dead, literally? Dead. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> he died before the election, but before he died, they, well, I'll tell you more about it. Okay. He made it through the primary. 24-7 channel for queer <coughs> women launches OML on Reverie, premieres on October 29th with all queer women. Texas kills policy allowing anti-LGBT discrimination in social work. I was hoping that would be reversed. Yeah. And so it has been. Yes. <coughs> On their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Sarah Cooper, Trump's TikTok nemesis, sees her star rising and his falling. Cher sings happiness is a thing called Joe. <laughs> the prom trailer features Meryl Streep, Kidman, and a queer-themed love story. Anne and I saw this play in Broadway. It was really good, wasn't it? And we regret that. I mean, <coughs> it's wonderful that all these stars are going to be in the Netflix show, but we were, the original cast was wonderful. And James Col Cornyn, the guy who does the... Um, there's been some... Conan? The guy who does the um, video, the... Uh, um, <laughs> You know, the, this music in the, he goes in the car and sings music. Oh, he I sings don't know. song with people. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. heterosexual. <clears throat> and he's been cast as the gay character, so there's been a little dispute about Ooh. that. 
Yeah, I'll get his name before the end of the hour. TikTok, TikTok bars conversion therapy and white supremacist content on their site. Georgette Gomez is out to make Latinx history as she runs for Congress from San Diego. This is interesting. RuPaul and Cory Booker learn they are related. Salt Lake City man charged with raping a lesbian. Reagan <coughs> Rapino and Sue Bird are engaged to be married. They have been dating for four years. I have a picture of them, as you can see there. Uh, Louise Johnson, leading light of the daughter of Elitis, has died. She was born in Stoneham, Massachusetts, but was raised in Everett, Mass. She was president of the DOB for 15 years. <coughs> the Vatican has said, comments made by the by Pope Francis on civil union law in a documentary last month was taken out of context and did not signal a change in the church doctrine on homosexuality or support for same-sex marriage. Betty Dobson, the beloved queen of masturbation, has died at 91. <laughs> <laughs> <I> oh! <know. laughs> I see. Virginia Mollicat, 88, has died. She was a feminist that found liberation in the Bible. We'll have more about her. <clears throat> in Waco, Texas, a 17-year-old, Damarian Dem Delgrate, <coughs> is charged with the murder in a fatal shooting of a man he met on Grinder. Frederick Western, a New York artist known for his incisive uh, collages, has died at 75. He was a dedicated archivist of mass <coughs> media representation of men. He was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Montana could elect the first out statewide official. Bryce Bennett is running for Secretary of State. And lastly, Fortune Famister weds Jacqueline Smith among marriage equality fears. The comedian says their wedding was a pandemic safe environment. So those are my headlines. Well, it's James Corden who yes. does carpool karaoke. Uh -huh, yes. So he, I love him. Uh, yeah. But. He was in Into the Woods and has done a fair amount of stuff on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, um, it would be, might be better. If the original cast was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that Linda took my first uh, headline, world headline about well, the Pope. Do you want to talk about it then? Well, no, I, I'm done. That oh. was all I had to say about it. Well, I was going to expand a little on it, but, you know. I had uh, enough said about the Pope. <laughs> Vatican breaks silence, <laughs> explains Pope uh. civil union comments. I mean, there was a little, there were some repercussions. Uh, Maduro, the head of Venezuela, says now that he urges same-sex marriage under the mistaken impression Maybe that the Pope has endorsed it when he did anything but. And then the head of uh, <laughs> censorship in Kenya was outraged and said, oh, it must have been wrong, and so it is. He didn't endorse marriage uh, at all. So let's move on to other stories <coughs> then. All right. Queer Japan shows uh, the Asian nation's LGBT boom in a new trailer. So I'll show that to you in my first segment. News from Taiwan. A pride parade draws 130,000 in Taipei. And I have a picture before you of some of the celebrants. Taiwan has a really low COVID count. Yes. <coughs> so they... It's really like the same as one of our states I was reading. I can't remember yeah. which one. Like Southeast Asia, they dealt with SARS in a very real capacity, and they just took everything they learned from SARS and employed it for COVID, where everything we learned from SARS, we closed those offices so we couldn't benefit from the knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta love it. Um, so in response, uh, you know, they had this huge pride parade and um, President Tsai Ing-wen issued a statement supporting 
the LGBT community Good. in their pride parade. But the um, religious people who were organizing the national prayer breakfast were outraged by this and they canceled the national prayer breakfast. The president was supposed to speak. What a shame. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> they didn't want the president, so it was canceled <coughs> for the first time in 20 years. Um, I feel terrible. More exciting, well, I don't know that this was <laughs> exciting, but um, good, more good news from Taiwan includes two same-sex couples getting married um, in a first for Taiwan because they're both in the military. And I have a picture before you now. Um, <clears throat> there were, this was a mass wedding with 188 couples. Uh, it's the first time same-sex couples have been read and celebrated at a military ceremony. So the picture before you now from um, left is Jin Ying Hu San, 24, marrying Li Li Cheng, 26, and Li Li is a lieutenant and is in uniform. And then next to them, um, Yumi Meng, 37, and Major Wang Li, 36. So that's left to right, and there they all are celebrating their wedding in a military ceremony. So good for them. I have um, news from India. Marriage will protect our rights and affirm commitment, says um, say a same-sex couple who has petitioned to uh, get married in India. I have a picture before you now. Here they are, Kavita Aurora and Nikita Khanna. Um, Kavita is on the left. So they're petitioning to get married. Um, an Indian state also, um, and this is very good news, an Indian state lets trans people register for the civil service exam. So um, this state is Assam, and it is the second Indian state I have so many um, pages here. It's a, it's a psalm. It's the first Indian state to add transgender as an identity category for people seeking civil service jobs, allowing 42 trans candidates to apply to sit in the entry exam. Um, so this is very good news. Um, the trans is that before or after you pay off the... Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, Linda, don't, don't joke. Um, there's another state that is thinking of doing it, but Assam is the first. Um, let's go to Europe now. Civil <coughs> partnerships can now be converted to marriages in Northern Ireland. So that's good news. Yeah. You can just do it, apparently. And Keith will be interested in this. The UK census will include questions about gender identity and sexual orientation for the first time. And of great interest to me is a story involving Dutch penguins. <laughs> and um, Oh, that was a funny one. And I have a picture of them. I'll show them now. They're culprits in a drama. I'll show you the picture now, and then I'll uh, explore the story in greater detail oh, a in a subsequent segment. They, they look were, innocent, but they're... They were bad. They're culprits. Uh, so, oh, is it back to me? No, no, I oh. have many more. <laughs> okay. Um, Isco Moreno, who's the mayor of Manila, signs an anti-discrimination ordinance... In Nigeria, um, a judge throws out a case against 47 men um, facing a homosexuality charge. Um, and this, on the face of it, sounds like good news. But actually, um, it, isn't. it isn't. It could be better. Um, the case against the 47 men charged with public displays of affection with members of the same sex um, was thrown out. Um, as we know, 
the Nigerian law, there's a Nigerian law banning gay marriage, punishable by 14 years in prison, and same-sex amorous relationships are also banned. Um, and this law prompted an international outcry when it came into force under former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2014. Uh, these men were arrested in 2018 on a police raid in a Lagos hotel. Police said they were being initiated into a gay club, but the defendants say they were going to a birthday party. Prosecution and defense lawyers in the case told Reuters nobody had yet been, con been convicted under the law, which led to the case of the men being widely seen as a test case. When the um, case came to be tried, the prosecution didn't show up because they didn't have enough evidence. But the wrinkle here is that the justice struck out the case and said he had done so due to lack of diligent prosecution. Um, the specific charge the men faced relating to public displays of affection carries a 10-year prison sentence. But under Nigerian law, defendants in a case that struck out can be rearrested and arraigned again on the same charge, whereas it's not possible if the case has been dismissed. So he struck it out, and so all these oh. defendants are like, God, I've got to, I wanted some closure, um, yeah. and now I have to live with this. Dismissed it's, without prejudice. Mm-hmm, <coughs> mm-hmm. Struck down, struck out. Yeah, struck out. So uh, to recap, homosexuality is outlawed in many uh, African countries, as you know. So let's move on to um, a couple more headlines. This is a good one. In, in conservative Mexico, Muxes is a soccer team that tackles outdated LGBTQ stereotypes. Um, Mexico City's Muxes are named after the indigenous transgender women who have been part of Mexican communities for centuries. And this particular team offers a particular um, safe space for um, transgender people, LGBT people. Um, their black uniforms feature a rose and a soccer ball. They've gained prominence um, and they're being sponsored by Nike. Playing on an LGBT team is different, says 25-year-old footballer Umberto Ramirez. No one discriminates against you, even though not all the players are gay. So I still have more headlines, if you'll indulge me. Um, a group of activists strives to end f the forced imposition of the third gender designation in Nepal. Um, they um, have formed an organization called the Trans Rights Collective, and apparently in Nepal, you can't declare yourself gay or les. If you are gay or lesbian or transgender, you have to be designated as other or a third gender. And so the transgender community is outraged by this because, um, you know, they identify as the gender that they, you know, they have been confirmed in, not um, as a third gender. So um, it leads to constant misgendering, they say, and um, many efforts have been made for the queer movement to uh, change this. It's been 19 years since LGBT rights, T rights activism have commenced in Nepal. The country is often celebrated as a safe haven for queer people, uh, however, that's not the case at all. Uh, some cases in the past have been, have culminated in cold-blooded murder. Transgender people are still denied equal rights to citizenship, marriage, property, and education. So this uh, trans rights collective has been formed and is fighting some of these um, inequities. Two more, three more headlines. 
Um, Amnesty International condemns the Indonesian military for an anti-LGBT campaign. Um, homosexuality is not illegal in Indonesia as we know, uh, yet in the past years there's been growing anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. Um, the Indonesian military has recently imprisoned and dismissed a soldier for having same-sex intercourse with another officer. Um, the mili a military court declared a chief private identified only as P guilty of violating an article of the military criminal code on disobedience obedience to service orders after being found having sex with a subordinate in the armed forces. He was sentenced to one year's imprisonment and dishonorably dismissed. Amnesty International is protesting this. In Sri Lanka, forced anal exams are occurring with great regularity in homosexuality uh, persecutions. And in this article, there was a lot of um, description. The Sri Lankan Penal Code prohibits carnal intercourse against the order of nature and gross indecency between persons commonly understood in Sri Lanka to criminalize same-sex relations between consenting adults, including in private spaces. So, um, oddly, paradoxically, Sri Lanka has ratified a code of international human rights treaties that obligates the government to protect people's rights not to experience violence, discrimination, torture, and other treatment. The Constitution um, recognizes and prohibits torture, but it's going on. The recent evidence of violence and harassment against the LGBTQ community by law enforcement is gravely concerning says a member of Equal Ground, um, which is the LGBT rights or LGBTQ rights organization in Sri Lanka. And if I just may conclude with one more headline, it involves Jacinda Ardern, who's doing wonderful things in New Zealand, including appointing Grant Roberts, Robertson as New Zealand's first openly gay man to a deputy prime minister role, and let's see a picture of him. He'll be the country's first openly gay man to hold the role after being appointed as part of the country's new leadership team. And there are key points in his platform, and um, Adern has also nominated, you know, uh, nominated Maori candidates. They won't take us. Um, but anyway, so a lot of exciting things are happening in New Zealand to top off some of my so mixed what happened, headlines. What, what happened? A no Poland today? Well, Poland is absolutely um, convulsed by the new draconian abortion law that they've yeah. passed. So outraged feminists are joining with outraged LGBTQ activists, and they're all in the streets. Okay. So... So, since we're taping on <coughs> Election Day, 19 pages of 194 hostile LGBTQ actions taken by the current administration. Oh. And in future shows, we will discuss some of them looking at the changes that we want to see happen. And what is of interest is with this as a backdrop, recent federal polling, 70% of people support marriage equality. 83% nationwide support non-discrimination protections based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Looking at the U.S. House, there are currently seven <coughs> LGBTQ plus incumbents that could change after tonight to increase to 10 or possibly 12. Senate's not going to change because there are only two out lesbians, one out lesbian, one out bisexual 
in the Senate, and neither of them were up for re-election. Looking at some of the races that we're going to be following, <coughs> Linda already mentioned two, Georgette Gomez coming out of California, going to the U.S. House. She would be the first queer Latinx elected to the U.S. Congress. And you mentioned Bryce Bennett, who's running for the Montana Secretary of State, but you didn't get Mark Elias, state of Washington. He's running for lieutenant governor. Ah. Mm. And just so you know, that, that 574 candidates, they're sort of nationwide, varying offices. There is one in North Carolina. Jenna Wadsworth is running for commissioner of agriculture. That's the one that she, I talked about, yeah, remember? Linda she, reported that last time, I, that she, um, she got all this hate mail and everything because she said something about Trump. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and that's that. actually may have helped her in the polls. Also looking at Charmaine McGuffey. Yeah. Do you remember this one? Ohio, Hamilton County. She was fired for being a lesbian, ran against the incumbent sheriff in the primary, yes. and whooped him. Yes. So we may have a lesbian sheriff in Ohio. There are two people running in New York, uh, Richie Torres and Mondera Jones, that if they are elected, they would be the first LGBTQ plus people of color in the U.S. Congress. And Texas is looking at their House of Representatives, their first transgender me member, Madeline Eden. Um, there's also the incumbents, and one of them particularly of interest, and I'm not gonna find her right off, Charisse Davids, who is coming out of Kansas. She was the first indigenous mm. LGBTQ plus person yes. elected to Congress. <clears throat> We're also in Vermont going to be looking at, you know, we have 12 candidates running in the House, LGBTQ plus, and two in the Senate. The House may go from six LGBTQ incumbents to 10, possibly 11. That would be nice. In the Senate, we're going to lose one because, well, Debbie Ingram is running and Brian Campion, uh, Debbie Ingram is not running. Becca Ballant and Brian Campion are running. Yeah. And there are no other out LGBTQ members who are running for a Senate seat here. Mm -hmm. Does Becca so, Ballant have opposition? Yes. There are, it's a two-person district. There are two Democrats who are <coughs> both of the re incumbents who are running, and there are two Republican oppositions. But that has been a strong Democratic seat for a very long term, so I don't think anybody is imagining mm -hmm. that that's going to shift. There might be an upset in one of the House districts, which has been a split district, because there are, is an incumbent Democrat who is running. There is a strong Democratic person also running. Progressive? And, and, no, a Democratic Party. Mm. And sometimes what happens in a split district such as that, ideology splits the district. But if you have two very well-known and strong candidates of the same party, one will pull the other forward. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're looking for our first openly transgender member of the House, maybe coming out of <coughs> Sanuski by the end of the night. <laughs> so can you tell us when the place with the split district? Can you? No? I will. At dinner, I will tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we ready now? Okay. The U.S. Supreme Court, with newly confirmed Amy Coney Barrett, will hear the first major test on religious liberty and LGBT rights, LGBTQ rights just one day after the election. First to be heard will be an oral arguments on whether Philadelphia can enforce a non-discrimination policy for sexual orientation on Catholic social services. A leading faith-based child welfare agency that does not work with same-sex 
foster parents. Philadelphia refused to renew a contract for the city's foster care program because the group's refusal to accept gay and lesbian participants. So Doesn't we'll look see. good. No, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, I don't know why we have to give public money to religious organizations. I know it. You know, it's I ridiculous. Know it. Separation I'm, of church and I state. I know. I'm with Andy. Wyoming's out politicians make their voices heard and seek a hate, seek a hate crimes law. Sarah Brulingame and Don, and I'm going to have a hard time with his name, Zwan Zixer, and Kathy Connolly and Chad Banks are the out legislators in Wyoming, and um, they're known for being liberal, and has gone. And you know the state. The, the state of Wyoming hasn't voted for a Democratic, in the Democratic um, elections for a Democrat since 1952. But they're trying to get this hate law passed, and it's uh, one of the only states, or one of the very few states, that do not have a hate crime bill. Isn't and, uh, um, Dick Cheney's daughter a representative from Wyoming? Wyoming, she could be. I don't know. Liz Cheney? Liz Cheney, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. Chicago, Blood Sport Politics, the lesbian mayor, is in a new documentary. The docuseries from Hoop Dreams filmmaker Steve James provides ringside seat to the dynamic, complicated metropolis. And you can see here a picture of... Um, Lori Lightfoot, her wife Amy Ezelman, and her daughter Vivian. So that should be interesting. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether it's, you know, pro or con or complicated. Interesting, <laughs> I'm sure. And this is an interesting story because this dead marijuana candidate was paid by the GOP <laughs> to, to defeat a lesbian politician. He wasn't even liberal. <laughs> Alan Weeks was running against U.S. Representative Angie Craig, and Weeks died in September. But a voicemail had emerged in which he said he was asked by the GOP to be a spoiler, and they gave him $15,000 to run. So, And 24-7, Channel for Queer Women launches OML, on Reverie, which launches October 29th with an all-queer cast and non-binary content. Reverie, the world's first LGBTQ cam cable TV network, has a new channel, and it is called OML, which stands for <coughs> Only Lesbian, let me see, Only Lesbian Network or Channel. Now, oh, wait a minute. Uh, that doesn't fit the initials uh, you gave us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, well, well, anyway. <laughs> let me, while well, you... Reverie. It's a uh, cable network. It's a new channel. Let's see. Okay. Oh, one more lesbian. And was founded uh, in 2009. Oh. <laughs> you can find the channel on Roku, Roku, Comcast, Xfinity, and others if you look. So Ann and I looked it up. Um, we found it. Didn't we? We did. We did. Okay. And I just have two more stories, and then I think um, Salt Lake City, a man charged with raping a lesbian, has been released without bail. While raping her, he was telling her that he was going to fix the gay. <clears throat> her assailant is Adam Wood, 43. The victim was visiting his wife when the attack occurred. <clears throat> but it seems like sometime during the attack, I think they were all drinking, I think, and um, they were all pretty drunk, and I think the wife kind of maybe disappeared. She went to bed, or I don't know what happened. <coughs> but um, he dragged her down in the basement, and he raped her on a number of occasions, and um, the only way she escaped was by um, grabbing him in his genitals, and as she ran out to the car and got in it and shut the and locked the car, he said, "You better not tell anybody." And her, she went right to the police and had a rape kit done. 
but I don't know why he was given, um, he was released without bail. It mm -hmm. seems to me kind of not so good. He said, she said, yeah. and depending on the court and the judge, who knows how they're going to react. Virginia, Virginia Mollenkett, 88, has died. She was a feminist that found the liberation in the Bible. A Christian evangelical was shunned for her lesbianism and became an influential scholar of the Bible, finding it in it acceptance of LGBTQ people. Prominent Christian evangelicals prayed for her destruction while others said she saved their lives. And here is a picture of her. Okay, Ann? Well, I have uh, an anecdotal addition um, to the story about the rape. Uh, when we were living in Madison many years ago, uh, there was a lesbian liaison appointed to the govern governor's office. And she was raped in the parking lot, in the city's parking lot. And as the rapist raped her, he said, I'm fucking the governor's dyke. I'm fucking the governor's dyke. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. Um, and I also have some news about Liz Cheney, if you are <laughs> interested. Is it Wyoming? It is Wyoming. Uh -huh. She is an American attorney and politician serving in, as the U.S. representative for Wyoming at large congressional district. She's been doing it since 2016, and she's the House Republican Conference Chair. We've seen her on the news. Oh, uh, she's I the, have. That, she's which terrible. is the third highest position in the GOP House leadership, and she's up for re-election. Uh, she's 54, but that's maybe more about the entire in the entire House of Representatives is up for re-election every two years. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I should I do know that. But yeah, you do. <laughs> I got caught up with it. <laughs> was the story of the moment. But let's turn to queer Japan, shall we? Um, it's it show this documentary showcases uh, out leaders in the Asian nations rainbow movement. Um, the new documentary, directed by Graham Colbines, explores the LGBTQ plus culture in Tokyo and other regions through the eyes of its leading figures. Colbines, along with producer Hiromi Lida and Ann Ishley, created Queer Japan over a five-year journey with over 100 interviews. The documentary features drag queen Vivian Sato, erotic, erotic manga artist Janora Tagami, Buto dancer, and Buto is a form of Japanese dance theater, you may be interested to know, uh, Atsuchi Masuda, multimedia artist Noji Sumiko, HIV positive advocate Hiroshi Hasagawa, activist Akira the Hustler, transgender author Tomato Hakano, and more. There's no singular queer Japan because queer people are not a monolith, Colbein said in a statement. I, we can go along with that. This film merely offers a patchwork of personal experiences told by a few dozen artists, activists, community leaders, and everyday people living in Japan today. It is my deepest hope that our approach does justice to the subjects and communities we're depicting. It's a great honor to share the stories of the brave individuals who opened their lives to this film, and it is my intention with Queer Japan to ampli amplify their voices to audiences around the world. Queer Japan will be available in partnership with local indie theaters um, via theatrical at home and on VOD, December 11th, through Apple TV, Prime Video, and Google Play. So now let's look at a clip from Queer Japan. Well, 
っていうのはあるんですよね。もしもしもしもしも今日本ではこう LGBT ブームって言われるような状況だと思うんです。可視化していく、見えるようにしていくっていうのがすごく大事だと思ってるんです。一方でそのこうできるだけマジョリティと圧力を起こさないっていう考え方もやっぱりあるわけです。家族の痴漢とか形が日本の伝統が壊れ。海外でいうとあのパピープレイ、SM プレイの中の一種ですかねそして、他人を傷つけない限りにおいては、人間ってもっと自由であるべきだと、私は思う昔はもっとクリアとかゲイって言っちゃえば、もう全部含まれてるのに、なんかもう今、LGBTQAP。仕事は歯医者さんです。大学教員です。僕はまあトランスジェンダーのまあレズビアンなのかバイなのか、まあちょっと今は模索中。仕事はゲーマーのマスターをしてます。楽しい。毎日楽しい。すごい臭しを感じたので。正常に戻っていける部分を戻っていけなくなってしまいますよねっていう言われちゃうのも嫌だって病気じゃないもん別にってだってそれが自分なんだからもともとはクイアって言葉はあいつらおかしいっていう意味で使ってるんです要するに自分たちが正常だと思ってる人たちがあの人たちはおかしいよっていう意味でクイアって言ってる方もクイアだよそうそうそうこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちからすればこっちから Finish it up. <coughs> yes, ma'am. All right. I want to hear about the tank. That's where we're going next. <laughs> let me uh, let me locate my European news. Dutch penguins. Okay. They uh, were bad. Boys. Yeah. <laughs> I love these penguins. A pair of gay penguins won't stop stealing <coughs> eggs from other penguin couples. Yeah, there's a picture now before you Are of them. Are they boy penguins? Of the culprits. They're boys, but they yeah. stole from lesbian penguins. <laughs> um, the parents in training have taken a whole nest. They won't stop stealing eggs, but now they've taken a whole nest. Oh, um, they're a pair of male Magellanic penguins. Oops, oops. Uh, well... This is a digression, a penguin digression. A pair of men, male Magellanic penguins at the San Francisco Jew, Zoo were deemed, were deemed the best penguin parents in the zoo. These two troublemakers I'm talking about won't be getting the chance to have the honor anytime soon. <laughs> the Dutch duo <coughs> stole an egg last year, but it didn't hatch. Sadly, this year, they decided to egg snatch from a lesbian couple, so none of their eggs will be fertile because the poor lesbians couldn't fertilize them. Uh, the very determined pair of penguins brazenly moved into the female pair's enclosure, hustling them out of the space, <laughs> and have spent their time since alternating between taking care of penguin business, I don't know what that is, but, uh, and sitting on the eggs. The male couple now has two nests, Penguins breed twice a year, and it's expected that the female pair will simply build a new nest and lay more eggs. Enterprising of them, <laughs> self-reliant female penguins. Maybe one day we will welcome a chick that has been hatched by a gay couple. Who knows? They might succeed next year, says the zoo's, this is the Amsterdam Zoo's Sander Drost. Why don't they give them one like the other ones have? 
the other zoos. They didn't wait. They just took initiative. <laughs> That's right. It's so common for the birds to form same-sex couples. The London Zoo had a pride festival for their penguins last year, complete with a gay pride banner, and that's widely displayed in on social media. Uh, the banner was also in honor of a pair of penguins housed at the zoo, Ronnie and Reggie, who became a pair in 2014. They became known for adopting an abandoned egg. They later shared parenting duties after their chick, Kaitan, was born the following year. But not these two culprits who've st <laughs> stolen the lesbians. They stole the whole nest. But I know. I know. Barged right in and, you know, drove made, the mothers up. Made themselves at home. <laughs> <laughs> very true. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. and I love those. We love our penguins. Oh. That's right. So, trivia. All 50 states have had openly LGBTQ plus elected officials. In, in 46 of those instances, it was to the Vermont legislature. Now, Vermont has had openly LGBTQ candidates elected to both the House and the Senate. So this was the, if you've been listening the last four years, <laughs> in the House, the first gay man was Ron Squires, elected in 1990. The first lesbian elected to the Vermont House was Susie Wizziwaddy in 2008. Mm -hmm. The Vermont Senate, the first gay man elected was Ed Flanagan in 2004. And the first lesbian elected was Becca Ballant ah. in 2014. Now, Ed Flanagan is interesting because not only was he the first openly gay man elected to the Vermont Senate, he was the first openly gay constitutional officer elected nationwide when he was elected to the Auditor of Accounts here in Vermont, initially elected in 1992, came out, and then was subsequently re-elected for two more terms. Yeah. So, and we're looking at adding at <coughs> least one transgender member to our Vermont House, hopefully by the time this airs. I know, it's hard to get local news until like the next day? No, I think Vermont, <coughs> I've heard predictions that we'll know on election day about really? what happens in Vermont. Okay. And, and as we're sitting having pizza and talking, yes. we will be watching our yes. local news stories for the break-in saying, and these are the results from. What's unique about Vermont is there's a paper ballot that backs up every vote but there are some municipalities where it's the voting machine which does the automatic tabulation for you. So depending on, and from sitting in what was lovingly referred to as the boiler room, counting numbers and calling town clerks, you know, some of the very small rural communities, excuse me, are you going to report your numbers? So sometimes it takes time because the Secretary of State's office has to reach out <laughs> to get the results. Well, next week we're going to have an interview show, and probably a lot will have unfolded on the national stage. Yes, we so. we'll have a lot to report. So with that, girlfriend. All right. Remember, stay calm. Uh, be take patient. A be take patient. a deep breath. Um, make, let's make all our votes count. Um, and... Remember to resist. resist.